In this lesson, we'll cover keyboard shortcuts. Most of what we'll do in Revit focuses or hovers around everything on the Systems tab. Now, as you can see on this tab, there's a variety of different commands for the different elements that we would create inside of MEP. And to start any of these, you could easily just click on that icon and it would start that function. However, some of us are keyboarders though. We like to enter in keyboard shortcuts versus using an icon on the ribbon or on a toolbar. So the question is now, do these exist, these shortcut keys inside of Revit? And if they do, what are they? Well, to see if they exist, just simply hover over any of the icons. For example, on my screen, I'm gonna move my mouse over the duct command and I'll pause right over the top of it. I can see a tooltip up here. Inside of the tooltip, it'll give me the name of the command, and then if a shortcut key exists, it'll be in parentheses. As you can see here, DT is the shortcut key for duck. Let's move over to the next command to the right, duck placeholder, just hover over it. I can see it gives me the name. There's no shortcut keys in parentheses, therefore this command doesn't have a shortcut key or keys assigned to it. Move over above the flex duck command. I see this has a shortcut key of FD. So as you can see, some of the commands in Revit do have shortcut keys and some do not. So now how do we change or set shortcut keys? Well, to do that, let's go to the large R in the upper left. Go ahead and click on that. And then on the fly out, click the options button. Now the option setting opens up where we can change a variety of different settings inside of Revit. On the left though, click user interface. And then toward the right, where it reads keyboard shortcuts, click customize. This will open up a new window, allowing us to change or modify or set any shortcuts for the various commands inside of Revit. You could scroll through the list and you can see there's a variety of different commands from different functional areas and different tabs that have and maybe don't have shortcut keys assigned to these. There are some commands though that you cannot change the shortcut keys that are currently configured. And to see that, I'm gonna change the filter dropdown from all to all reserved. Anything now that's in the all reserved list, you cannot change, hence it's grayed out. Most of these are functions or shortcuts with the alt key or the control key or the function keys. And you can see that as you scroll down and up through the list. Everything else though is fair game to change or add to. Now I did mention most of the things we'll do inside of this course are gonna be focused around the systems tab. So let's change the filter now to the systems tab. Then you can scroll down the list and just click systems tab. Now in this list, this shows me the functional icons from anything that is displayed on the systems tab. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see duct and you'll see it has that shortcut DT, which we illustrated. Also below that, you see duck placeholder and it doesn't have a shortcut key. So our task now is to add a shortcut key for duck placeholder. And you may ask a couple questions. One is, well, what can I key in? Well, you can key in up to five characters. Another question you may ask is, well, what if I key in something that already exists? How does that work? Can I do it? Well, the answer is yes. You can key in a series of shortcut characters that already exist. Revit will allow you to cycle through the commands that use the same set of shortcut keys. And to illustrate that, I'm gonna do that for duck placeholder. So let's go ahead and just click on duck placeholder. When you do that, the press new keys box below is activated. And it's asking you now to key in the series of shortcut keys that you would like the duck placeholder command to use. Well, I'm gonna use DT. Same thing that's up on the screen right now for duct. So I'm gonna key in DT. And then I'm gonna click Assign. Now when I do this, Revit's gonna notify me saying, hey, DT already exists. Just make sure you're aware of that. I'm gonna say yes, that's fine, okay. Go ahead and click okay. So now I have two commands that are currently using the keyboard shortcut DT. One is duct and one is duct placeholder. What Revit will allow you to do is cycle through which one you want to use. So you can basically have two or more commands that use the same series of shortcut keys. You also can create multiple shortcut keys for the same command. Now, let's see how this works. Go ahead and click OK and OK again. Now, on your screen, we don't see anything right now, and I'm going to key in DT for the shortcut key to start the duct and the duct placeholder. 
Now, where it's going to notify you is in the lower left part of the Revit window. Right now, that's the area on my screen that reads, click the select tab for alternates, control, and shift. That will change to the actual commands that are started from DT. That area is called the status bar in Revit. So as I type in DT, I see the first command listed in the lower left. To cycle through, hit your up or down arrow. And you can see now I'm looking at duct. If I hit the down arrow, now I'm looking at duct placeholder. And I can cycle back and forth because Revit is waiting for me to choose which command you want to start. So let's say I want to start duct. When I just see duct, hit the space bar. That will actually start the actual duct command. Outside of the little save option that came up there, which we'll cover in another section, you can see now the duct command actually started. Go ahead and click escape to actually exit out of that command. Now, if you were to hover over the duct placeholder, I see it has a shortcut of DT. And if you go over duct, it has a shortcut of DT as well. And to illustrate that again, if I type in DT in the lower left, you can see the duct hitting the up or down arrow will allow you to cycle through. And then hitting the space bar will start the one that's highlighted. Hit escape to exit out of that. Now, if the shortcut key only had one command assigned to it, for example, piping, PI, Go ahead and type in PI. It starts the piping command, and you can hit escape out of that. So you can change or add as many shortcut keys as you want, making life easier if you're a keyboarder. Now, to get back to that keyboard shortcut window that we just saw, there's a shortcut key for that too as well. It's KS. So if you type in KS for keyboard shortcuts, you get back to that same window. Now, the reverse is true of what we just did if you want to remove that shortcut key. So I'm going to change my filter back to the Systems tab, and I'll scroll down to the Duck Placeholder, and then click on DT to the right of Duck Placeholder, and then if I wanted to remove that or any others, just click Remove. And then to close this, just click OK. So this was an overview of how to create shortcut keys, how to search for shortcut keys, and how to utilize shortcut keys inside of Revit.